Welcome to this week's Clarion Energy News. I'm Elizabeth Ingram, Content Director for Clarion Energy. Here are the top three stories we've been following. Number three, Siemens will provide the power component of the first gas fire plant built in Afghanistan since the 1970s. Siemens has received the first order for its SGT A45 mobile unit from Bayat Power. A few months from now, a complete gas fire power plant centered around the SGT A45 trailer mounted unit will provide electricity for the Jiaozan province in northern Afghanistan. The mobile unit uses an aeroderivative gas turbine which can provide capacity of up to 41 megawatts of power at 50 hertz. Afghanistan currently imports the vast majority of its power demand from abroad. The Bayat Power Phase 1 project will enable the country to reduce its dependency on imports and make use of its local natural gas reserves. At the same time, local produ power production is a key requirement for economic growth, social development, and improved security. Quote, Bayat Power Phase 1 is truly a groundbreaking project, achievable only with the innovative efficiency and capacity of the SGT A45 mobile turbine and the collaborative vision of Siemens, Bayat Power, and the government of the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan, said Dr. Isan Bayat, chairman and CEO of the Bayat Group. The SGT A45 mobile unit was designed for the growing market of rapid power generation, Siemens says. Number two, cybersecurity at hydroelectric plants is a hot topic this week. Last week, Norsk Hydro suffered from a cyber attack that crippled some of its infrastructure. Norsk Hydro is primarily an aluminum manufacturer, but the company also owns and operates 17 hydroelectric power stations in Norway. Immediately after the attack, the company's website was a simple placeholder that said, quote, following an extensive cyber attack on Tuesday, March 19th, Hydro has made progress in securing safe and stable operations across the company, end quote. Norsk Hydro immediately began isolating plants and operations after detecting the attack said Chief Financial Officer Ivan Kalovic. He said, quote, an enormous collective effort has been carried out throughout the organization with the aim to ensure safe and stable operations, unquote. He said the Norwegian police had opened an investigation into the attack. This morning on Twitter, the company said, quote, safe and secure recovery of Hydro's IT operations is our top priority, while we also do our utmost to limit any impact on Hydro's customers, suppliers, and other partners, end quote. In other hydropower cybersecurity news, the Office of the Auditor General of British Columbia released a report that said, Canadian provincial utility BC Hydro is effectively managing cybersecurity risk by detecting and responding to incidents on the parts of the electric power system covered by mandatory reliability standards, but components that don't fall under the mandatory standards may be vulnerable to cybersecurity threats and should be monitored. The office made three recommendations around assessing the cybersecurity risk, maintaining an inventory of BC Hydro's hardware and software components, and implementing detection mechanisms and monitoring in real time. BC Hydro issued a statement that said, in part, we are developing a plan to address the report's recommendations, including taking immediate steps to continue to expand our monitoring and detection capabilities to all BC Hydro facilities. And now our top story. Renewable energy generation has almost doubled in the past 10 years, thanks to a major buildup of wind and solar, according to the U.S. Energy Information Administration. A new EIA report shows that renewables achieved a record of 742 million megawatt hours of electricity generated in 2018. This is compared to 382 million megawatt hours produced in 2008. Wind and solar combined to make up 90% of that renewables increase, the report shows. Hydro increased about 2% over the past decade. Hydroelectricity is still the biggest piece of the renewables mix, records show, totaling 292 million megawatt hours generated last year. Wind is catching up, reaching 275 million megawatt hours for 2018, according to the EIA. And U.S. solar generation has jumped exponentially in the decade, from 2 million to 55 million megawatt hours. Solar now generates 2.3% of the electricity mix, compared with hydro and wind at 6.9% and 6.5%, respectively. Utility-scale wind is helping fuel the renewable rise. New offshore and onshore wind projects pushed its capacity to 94 gigawatts, nearly four times what it was in 2008. Solar has multiplied more than 50 times to 51 gigawatts of installed capacity, according to the EIA. Renewables, including biomass and other resources, accounted for 17.6% of electricity generated in the U.S. last year. High Division International, the world's largest event for the hydroelectric power industry, takes place July 23rd through 25th in Portland, Oregon in the U.S. This event offers attendees three opportunities for in-the-field technical tours of operating hydropower plants, from small irrigation hydro to large multi-purpose facilities. Visit hydroevent.com to learn more. 
That's it for this edition of Clarion Energy News. I'm Elizabeth Ingram. Thank you for watching.